Okay. It's it's there. Hello, hello, welcome back. My name is Jihan and this is GT Boss and today I have a beautiful and amazing guest that will be demoing the next 30 or 45 minutes of yoga practice. This is gonna be a gentle, slow flow, a yin yoga practice to celebrate this beautiful full moon in Libra with the eclipse where the energy of Libra is eclipsed and the energy of Aries is enhanced and even though Aries is pure fire and pure power, all that we want for this practice is to connect with our hearts, to settle down, to slow down and to come back into our roots, into our heart, to really understand that the light that is eclipsed right now must be encountered within ourselves. With all that being said, let's begin the practice in a child's pose. Knees wide apart, big toes together. You can start working your hips back towards your heels. If you have props, you can make your way there and grab your, your props, your blocks that will enhance your practice. And I'm gonna be here modifying according if it's needed and also adjusting her with my hands to help her enter in a deeper connection with herself. If you have someone by your side, you could practice these by adjusting the other person as I am doing, and then the other person adjusts you. Start activating your ujjayi, breathing that deep, victorious breath overhead, over nose. That feels almost like a scratch over the throat and that you can actually listen to. And as you breathe, deep, long, and slow, you will be able to tap into your parasympathetic nervous system and decompress, meaning that you will start feeling more relaxed, more safe, and this is your safest space for you to acknowledge the incredible human being you are, for you to acknowledge your victories, and one of those victories is getting the moment and the time for yourself to take accountability, and to honor and celebrate your darkness, understand that darkness, because from there, all the light will ignite. This is your moment to set your intention. If it resonates with you, maybe you bring your palms together overhead in Anjali Mudra, in Anjali Mudra to set an intention, bringing the elbows near your head, your forehead down. Your intention could be a mantra or an affirmation that you can take with you during the whole practice. So that way, every time that your mind tries to wander, you take yourself back to this present moment. Take a deep inhale through the nose. Take a second sip of air and hold it at the top. Exhale, sigh it out and start coming back up in a supported tabletop position where we place our hands on top of the blocks for a supported tabletop position. Yes. Let's go into either the needle flow on the hips, lifting, picking up the right knee up and make circles with that knee and that hip, yeah. Circles towards the right, lubricating the right hip, lubricating your joints. Big circles towards one side and reverse direction, big circles towards the other side, beautiful. Letting that right knee down on the ground and switching sides, pick up the left knee, make big circles. Don't be afraid to take too much space, big circles. Eye of the needle flow on the hip reverse direction. Why we use the blocks is that we lift our torso and that way we're not challenging too much, too much our arms in here. Exhale, release, and come back again into your child's pose. 
maybe knees wide apart, big toes together, and you continue with the hands on top of the blocks. You can continue placing the palms on top of the blocks, yes. Take a deep inhale and slowly start rolling the upper body up and forward. Yes, until you get in a, yes, in a cobra pose, Bhujangasana, as you exhale, come back into your child's pose. Two more like this. Inhale, roll up and forward. And stay here for a few breaths. Exhale, child's pose. Beautiful. You can move at your own pace or at my guidance. Slowly lubricate in your spine. Come back, child's pose. And meet me again in your tabletop position. And now you will place the right knee on top of the right block. Yes. And you remove the block that is under your hand and you make three cat cows with that knee lifted. Inhale, roll in the shoulders up and back, lifting the tailbone up, exhale, round and curl up, up the upper back. Inhale, belly drops, open your throat, recalibrating the hips. Exhale, navel in, chin to chest. Inhale, big spinal flexion. Exhale, big ex spinal extension. Neutral spine. We remove the block under the right knee and we place it under the left knee. And we create the same three cat cow movements in here. Inhaling and looking up. Inhale, open up your throat, look up, exhale, round and curl, puff up the back. Inhale, and maybe you could tuck the toes under. And as you exhale, maybe you press the tops of the feet on the ground. One last round in here, deep inhale, looking up, opening your chest and your throat. Exhale, expanding your spine fully and your discs. Release the block under your knee. Tuck the toes under. Hover the knees a few inches off the ground for your hovering tabletop position. Hovering the knees. Beautiful. Play like an imaginary corset on your belly. Push your hands into the ground. Spread your fingers wide. Looking down, extending the elbows. Feeling how your strength and your fire ignites from within. As you exhale, you start lifting and reaching the hips up and back. You could keep a slight bend on your knees to protect your arm strings. You can start pedaling it out. You can start bending one knee at a time. Maybe your heels will start descending and touching the ground. Maybe not, and that's okay. Pushing your hands into the ground, feeling like the seat wants to touch the ceiling. We are here trying to find that stillness in our down dog. Really be mindful to push your hands into the ground, extending the elbows, and try to find your stillness. Try to find your stillness. Take a deep inhale in here. And even longer exhales in here. One more deep inhale, and we recharge with someone if we have the possibility. Keeping the hands just there. Take a deep inhale. And even longer exhale. One more deep inhale here. And as we exhale, we lift the heels off the ground. We go on the tippy toes, lifting the heels off the ground, and we take them down. We will be doing this two more times. Heels down. Heels up. Yes. Heels down. Continue moving the hips up. You could bend the knees, but go on your tippy toes and down now we slowly walk and tippy toe towards the top of the mat beautiful softening the knees rolling the upper body up and forward reaching your arms up towards the sky exhale cactus open your heart inhale beautiful reach your arms up exhale swan dive forward fold uttanasana interlacing your hands on your back Yes, beautiful. Softening the knees, bring that fist up and overhead. Soften the knees so that your chest, your torso, yes, beautiful, get close to your knees. Take a deep inhale in here. And as you exhale, you release your hands on the ground, letting the palms on the ground, and moving their left leg back. 
Take a step back, left knee down on the ground. Left knee down on the ground. Left knee down on the ground. Hands can be on your thigh, can be on your lower back, or it could be up towards the sky, Angelayasana. Opening your heart, opening your shoulder. Remembering that we might get some permanences in this practice, removing the urge to go up faster. Exhale, both hands down inside of the right foot, moving the right foot outside a little bit. Both right hands inside of the right foot, moving the right foot a little bit outside towards the corner of the mat, placing the blocks inside of you and playing with the length of the blocks to place the forearms on top of the blocks. Forearms on top of the blocks. I highly encourage you to continue with this activity and ease our lunch for at least three to five deep and long breaths. And you could even be rocking your body up and forward as she was doing, which is actually great, is a great work of uh, mobility for your body and it's a way that we access flexibility from a strength you will feel the intensity on your right it bend you will feel the intensity on your hips and it will ultimately give you the flexibility that you want that you want it long term you don't want it just for the practice breathe and now you can start letting that left knee down on the ground yes rest there and this time you can start stretching the right thigh away from you for your lizard stretch, thigh stretch in here. You could let the forearm on top of the block or you could go up on your left hand. You could go up on the left hand on top of the block or on top of the, of the ground and you stretch this quad with the right hand. Separating your chest from your quad. Beautiful. Maybe looking up or looking outside of the right shoulder. Breathe in here. Take a deep inhale and even longer exhale. If you have your galaxy pose, you could even go there. Yes, you could modify by placing the forearm down and maybe you will stretch your quad, bending this left knee and grabbing that foot with your left hand. And beautiful, see how she can turn the chest and open it up from there. That's the movement that we want to create and it's actually the movement that we will also be creating for the twists release release the back foot go up from there start framing that right foot in between your hands removing the blocks maybe you place the blocks by your sides and you could place the hands on top of the blocks and you start moving the hips back extending that left knee keeping the left knee down on the ground so we're moving into half split, yes. So the left hip is parallel towards the left knee and we have the toes facing the sky, it's a flat back and you could absolutely be modifying and supporting yourself with the blocks. It's the best that you can do. Take a deep inhale and lengthen, look up, exhale, fold. Three, two more like this, inhale, lengthen, flat back. Exhale, fold. This is the last one. Beautiful. Inhale, lengthen, look up and fold. In doubt, where do you where where to go? If you don't know where to go, go within. Close your eyes. There's always magical and beautiful things that you'll encounter by going within and closing your eyes rather than trying to look around. One more deep inhale in here. And as you exhale, you start bending that right knee forward and we start transitioning into a pigeon pose. So that right knee, right calf starts going down on the ground. And as she already did and create that stability for her, placing, yes, that's amazing, placing the right hip on top of the right hip, the block under the right hip. So the tendency here is that the right hip has to wants to go on the ground. So that why I highly encourage you to keep that right knee close to your hips and the right hip under the block. Once you feel like you're stable there, you can start going down with your upper body. You can start reclining yourself down and maybe placing your forehead on top of the block 
Also, you could be resting your forearms on top of the block. When we work on our hips, releasing control, releasing and surrendering, full surrender. So the hips are the center of creation and depending on the pose that we are targeting, we're working something different. That's why we usually stay longer in the hips, not only because they are the largest joint in the body, but because they carry a lot. The hips are the store of the emotions, meaning that also our wounds are stuck on our hips. Sometimes that's why the hips are so steep. Sometimes that's why when we are in a pigeon pose, we can encounter so many emotions and sensations. And by embracing all of that that may arise, you are going through. So the more we feel, the more we heal. And it can be sometimes overwhelming, but I assure you that we are all walking through this comfort together. It's all about finding comfort and discomfort. It's all about balancing the energy. So when we are working in a half split, we are working on releasing control from the hips. When we are in a pigeon pose, especially on the right side, we are working on balancing this masculine energy which targets the left side of the brain. And it's actually the one that we want to shut down on the yoga practice because we don't want to rationalize things. We just want to feel. With that being said, breathe into your right hip. Maybe keep an affirmation, a mantra. Remember that this is a yin class and it's meant to, to have permanences, to hold the permanences. And to understand that the challenge is and will always be in your mind. Slowly start incorporating your upper body up, removing the block under the hips, letting the left hip on the ground, swinging the left leg around on top of the right, swinging the left leg around on top of the right, and we are going into double pigeon pose. So both calves, chins parallel towards the top of the mat. Again, the tendency here is that we tend to go in a cross leg position, but what we want is to really create this kind of figure four pose where knees and heels are in the same line and they are parallel towards the top of the mat. Meaning that if you are facing this in your posture that's completely normal you could place one block under your thighs and that will give you maybe more comfort and now what we want is to push the sit bones on the ground and elongate the spine the hands can be on the on the back and you open the chest in here and rather than pushing that knee away what you can do is to massage the hip and tap into your hip and you can do it by yourself. You do it, you tap the hip or you massage your hips and gently that will send the information to the hips that you're ready to release, that you're ready, that you want to be open and that you want to create the best life for yourself because that's what we are creators, creating our life every single day. We take another deep inhale in here and as we exhale, we release the legs, we place the hands in front of us and we move into our second down dog of the practice. So we transition into our second down dog of the practice. And maybe you cross the legs, maybe you swing the legs around, plant the hands on the ground, hips elevated, breathe in here. We are going to make these same adjustments, this same activity that we did before 
lifting the heels up towards the sky, going on your tippy toes and down. Two more. Inhale, heels up at your maximum. Yes, beautiful. Heels down. One last. Heels up. And now with the tippy toes, we walk towards the top of the mat. Yes, as slowly as possible. Beautiful. And bending, softening the knees. We start going back up, one vertebrae at a time, rolling the upper body up towards the sky. Upper body up, rolling one vertebrae at a time. Yes, beautiful. Reaching both arms up towards the sky, palms together, reaching the sky, and side stretch towards the right side. Side stretch towards the right side, moving the left hip towards the left side, pushing the right hip down. So you're compressing the right side of the body, you're stretching the left side of the body, and you want to continue looking up, kind of like a back. Leg. You start going back up towards the center, and side stretch towards the other side, pushing that right hip towards the right, stretching the right side of the body, compressing the left side of the body, crescent moon. One more deep inhale in here. Exhale, come back up and find the back bend again that you were creating at the beginning of this sequence. Beautiful, you want to look up, exhale, release, fold over, plant the hands on the ground, bend the knees, pick up the right leg and take a step back with the right leg, right knee down on the ground, right knee down on the ground. Andhyanayasana, again, Andhyanayasana on the left side. We're creating the same sequence we did already. So we maybe place the hands on the thigh, maybe place the hands on your hips, or maybe the hands goes up towards the sky. Try to remember what you were doing on the other side, because yoga wants balance. As it is in life, it is in yoga. So if on the other side you Reach the arms up towards the sky. You want to do the same on this side. And you want to feel the difference from one side to the other. Continue opening your heart in here. Take another deep inhale. Exhale. Move the hands down. Plant the hands on top of the blocks. Moving the left foot a little bit outside. Yes, and we are transitioning into our lizard lunge. Activated lizard lunge. So we tuck the right toes under, extending the knee off the ground, activated lizard lunge, pushing the foot on the ground, hugging this on the ground, and you wanna activate. So again, I repeat, we want to create the balance that we want in our life. So we, if we activated the left leg on the other side, what we want is to do the same on this side. Yes. Beautiful. So we extend the leg off the ground. We breathe in here at least three breaths. And I'm not saying that you won't feel the same. You, you should be feeling the same on each side. Yes, I'm pretty sure that one side is more open than the other. I'm pretty sure that one side is more stiff than the other. So maybe instead of staying five counts, we stay for three counts. Now you can let that right knee down on the ground. Maybe you place the forearms on the ground, or maybe you go straight and stretch your left quad, separating the distance between your chest and your left quad. Maybe placing the left hand on that, on that quad, or maybe not the, the hand on the quad, so that, you, that way you help yourself stretch in your quad, yes. And you wanna look up towards the sky, you wanna look Maybe over the left shoulder. Breathe in here. If you are going into your galaxy pose, maybe you need to modify and place that right hand on top of the ground or on top of the block. That right hand on the ground, palm on the ground, and you grab the back foot with the left hand for your galaxy pose. Or not, maybe this side is not available and that's completely okay. That's the beauty of having a guest that it's a human being that is maybe feeling what you might be feeling and it's not the same as, 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 I, as how I feel. So that's why I wanted to create this space for you to understand that Maybe you feel good on one side and you can make some poses on one side, maybe on the other you can't do it. And remember that it doesn't matter 
your weight, your age, your age, or any part of your journey. You're always great on time. You're not going faster. You're not behind. You're just on time, doing an amazing job. Now you can slowly start removing the blocks and start framing the left foot in between your hands. Yes, and you can place no, you can place the hands on top of the block as well because we're going into a half split, moving the hips back, extending the left knee. Yes, slowly. Maybe you place the hands on top of the on the longer length of the blocks, both blocks in the same length. Yes, and you could keep a soft bend on the left knee, or you could possibly extend it fully as she is doing. And the idea is that the hips are in the same line as the knee, so we're really targeting the left arm string and elongating the spine. Beautiful. See how how important it is that you see yourself. That can be with a mirror, that can be filming yourself, because you can see where exactly you need to modify. Even if I am guiding you, sometimes you don't know exactly where you are until you see yourself making the practice. One more deep inhale in here, lengthen. Exhale, fold, breathe. If you, for any case, you have your full splits, you can do it and go there at any time. You can at any time you can level up the practice or go or go a little bit uh, back. Now you start bending that left knee, moving the hips forward, and we're entering in our pigeon pose on the left. So we start moving that left knee down, that left calf down. Yes. Beautiful. And same way as we did on the other side, we see it on top of the block. And once we feel like we're stable, we can start moving the upper body forward and down on the ground, resting on our hips. Maybe placing the forehead on top of the block and feeling the stability on your hips. Again, the tendency is that the left hip wants to go down on the ground and what we want is to create a stabilization on the hips so both hips are in the same line. And we breathe. We breathe in this left side of our body, which is our feminine energy impacting the right side of the brain, which is your creativity, your intuition, your the area in which you want to nurture and where you want to receive. So this will give you the awareness of that we all have both energies in ourselves. We all have masculine and feminine and we all want a balance of those energies in our bodies. In order to really thrive in life, we want to create this balance where we gracefully give and gracefully receive where we are actively nurturing and letting love get in ourselves and remember that everyone needs something different we're all connected and in a sense we're all the same but we are all experiencing this journey uniquely so there might be someone that needs to get a strength because they are super open and flexible and they need to get that strength in order to really create healthy boundaries and to receive. But there also might be people that are kind of more stiff and they need to develop that openness and really trust and really give trust in themselves and trust in others. So, by practicing and coming into your mind, you will really understand what is it that you need. Take another deep inhale here in your pigeon pose. And now we slowly start incorporating our torso up, removing the block if you have it, letting the left hip on the ground, swinging the right leg around and placing it on top of the left calf, double pigeon pose. Remember that we want to create these Yes, this calf parallel towards the top of the mat. Maybe this time the right hip is the one that is more steep and maybe you 
want to tap and massage your right hip a little bit or yes rather than push maybe you want to feel how it feels to be with an open heart in here and breathe with your hands on your back and try to stay here if you feel like you're ready to fold over you could be doing it and placing your hands on top of your back as well breathe in here Silence is key to be able to listen to yourself. It's the wisdom of your body that is guiding you through your heart. Take another deep inhale. And as you exhale, you start incorporating your torso up, removing the blocks. Release the legs, land the hands on your back, move the hands on your back, and bend the knees. Yes, also the feet on the ground. Open your chest. Yes, you open your chest. So now, what we'll be doing here, see what works best for you. Maybe fingers facing the back, maybe fingers facing your hips. That's something that this practice requires curiosity and exploration within your, your body. Pick up the right leg and place the right ankle on top of the left thigh. Yes. Open that right knee away from you. Dorsiflex that right foot. Spread your yogi toes, activating your neurons. And as you inhale, you lift the hips off the ground, leveling the hips up in a figure four reverse table pose. Opening the hips, activating our core, opening the shoulders, the chest, opening the right hip as well. Take a deep inhale and keep breathing and pushing the hips a little bit more up. Usually when we think that we can't continue, there's where the shift happens. One more deep inhale. Exhale, really slowly down. Yes, beautiful. My words are taking momentum in crescendo to give you the encouragement that you need in order to really hold yourself up into the pose. Now let's switch sides. Pick up the left leg, left ankle on top of the right thigh. Open up that left knee away from you. Activate the left foot. Spread your yogi toes. That will give you the connection and the send the signal into your brain to create new neurons. Take a deep inhale and lift the hips off the ground. Beautiful. See that you want to really open that knee away from you at the same time that you push the hips and you feel the connection. Everything is connected. As she's activating the hips up, she's also opening the heart and the shoulders. She's trusting with an open throat chakra as well. Take another deep inhale and lift the hips a little bit deeper. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Exhale, fold everything down. Beautiful. Take a deep inhale and lay on the ground. Lay, lay down on the ground, pull it down, yes. In your first Shavasana of the practice, take a deep inhale and as you exhale, you start bending the knees, soles of the feet on the ground, soles of the feet on the ground, knees bend, and same idea here, but laying down on the ground. We pick up the right leg and place the right ankle on top of the left thigh. Same idea here. We pick up the right leg and place it on top of the right and the left. Yeah, so the right knee start, we push the hands on the ground, we open the hands and we push the hands on the ground to find the stability. The right knee goes down on the ground, leave, moving the body, yes, towards the right side and it's straight up towards the left. So the left knee goes down, we move, we move slowly. So the right knee goes down and the left heel is helping and lifting till we go down and up. So we essentially start swinging from side to side, massaging the lower back, the spine, moving the left knee down with the right foot. One more in here. Exhale, release and switch sides. So we stop at the center and foot right foot down left ankle goes on top of the left beautiful we open that left knee so the left knee goes towards the left side of the ground and while the right hip goes up and we switch sides right knee and left foot down towards the right and we start swinging from side to side lubricating 
the hips, releasing tension on the discs, slowly and gently opening the hips, one last like this, deep inhale, exhale, release, beautiful. Soles of the feet on the ground, knees bend. Take a deep inhale and lift the hips off the ground, placing the block under your hips. Yes, rest the hips there. Soles of the feet together and knees wide apart in a, in a Barakonasana. Soles of the feet together, yes, and knees wide apart in a Barakonasana. So some people might find comfort placing the hands on top of the hips, and that's an, a, an option, or you could place the hands on the ground, uh, facing up or facing down. So if we are trusting the universe and what we want is to receive, we let the palms up, sending that signal that we are open. But if we, if we on the other hand, want to protect our energy and preserve the energy, we could also be placing the palms down. Bringing that awareness into every movement, every choice that we make in life, it's key for growth. Sometimes we're doing things great and amazing, but we don't even know that we are doing it in, in perfect alignment. So what would happen if we bring that awareness into the things that we do is that we can create more of that abundance, more of that light. Finding that, that light deep within ourselves, especially in the moments where outside feels messy, feels dark or feels uncertain in eclipse season what happens is that we can't see clearly things are eclipsed things are dark so where do we need to go where do we need to go we need to go within we need to go inwards and find that light deep within ourselves just like sunflowers when there's no sun they see each other to lift them up in light that's what we can do. Find someone else that is in the same synchronicity as ourselves, in the same alignment, in the same vibration, or simply go inside, deep within ourselves. It's with ourselves and with someone else that we can grow and unleash our true power. Now slowly take a deep inhale, bend the knees, also the feet on the ground, and let's remove the block that is under the hips. And now you can start lifting your upper body up because we will be going into a supported fish pose. So place the forearms, lift the chest, the upper body, go up, and we will place the block under your upper back. So what I'd like for this one is that you place the block under your scapula and then you let the head and the throat completely open and your arms can be kind of like in cactus and you extend your hands. What we'll be doing here is this pranayama. We activate the legs, we point the toes in our supported fish. We take a deep inhale, deep inhale, and as you exhale, you side out, opening your mouth and taking the thong out. <sighs> yes, thong out. Three, four more in here. Knee, deep inhale. <sighs> thong out. One more deep inhale, all the air, all the air, and ah, sigh it out, thong out. Whatever that is, is holding you back, whatever that you couldn't say in the past, continue with the breath work. Deep inhale, deep inhale, all the air in your system, and then you sigh it out and take the thong out. Open your mouth, open your mouth and take the thong out. <sighs> Releasing whatever that you couldn't say for any reason to someone or whatever that you couldn't say in any situation and that you are actually not gonna be able to say it anymore, you can release it right now. That's a weight that you shouldn't be carrying. It's like forgiveness. Take a deep inhale one more time. Exhale, sign it out, release. <sighs> Beautiful. Now we breathe regular, three deep and long breaths normally through the nose
the, length, the next exhalation, we can remove the block that is under our upper back. And we can lay fully in our last and final pose, which is our Shavasana. Legs extended by your sides, hands and arms extended, palms facing up. Everything that we do during the practice is in preparation for this moment. This is your reward. Your Shavasana, it's like any other meditation. Here is where you get to blueprint the practice in your system. Everything that you encounter, acknowledge during the practice, here you get the benefits. You are more than welcome to stay for longer in your Shavasana. the mantra is from ignorance lead me to truth from darkness lead me to light from death lead me to eternity may these words and vibrations stay with you for as long as possible now you can start bringing awareness into your physical body wiggling your toes wiggling your fingers Can stay longer or you could start coming up into a comfortable sitting position to seal the practice with us you could keep your eyes closed and your palms lightly on your lap facing up but seal the practice with a collective ohm so we take a deep inhale through the nose take a second sip of air hold it at the top and side out and now we chant with the next exhalation take all the air and we chant deep inhale to our forehead so our thoughts will always be positive and now we take them in front of our mouth so our words will always be spoken with love and now we take them in front of our chest so we may cultivate a sincere heart namaste and thank you thank you thank you for sharing your energy and your light with me today i hope you find a way back home which is your heart i hope you enjoy this class and i hope all the beautiful light that you see outside you find it deep within yourself again my name is jihan and this is jiti boss and please give me your feedback and share this video so more people can benefit for from these beautiful energies and remember that by you by 
connecting with us by hitting the like button. You're sharing your energy and helping me uplift the energy and the universal energy so that we all feel and be better and better every day. Thank you so much again. Bye. See you in the next one.